Welcome to Beyond Business, the program where we look at some of the latest trends in the global economy. South Korea has done it, so has Peru and Indonesia. These countries have engaged in something known as gastro diplomacy. It's an increasingly popular form of diplomacy that's aimed at selling a nation by titillating taste buds. Simply put, countries are increasingly thinking that the best way to boost exports, boost foreign investment and tourism is through the stomach. France has a stellar reputation as a culinary superpower and its cuisine is known across the world, but French officials have voiced concerns that its image is going sour. Could it be that French food is losing its flair and is the French economy becoming less savoury as a result? The world's best restaurant 2014 is once again Noma. It's the Oscars of the food industry. The only difference, the win is not the best director, but the most accomplished chef. The glitzy ceremony is organized annually by Britain's restaurant magazine. And for a second consecutive year, René Redzepi of Copenhagen's Noma takes the number one slot. The French came home with 11th place, a blow to a country that prides itself in the art of gastronomy. The ranking has set off alarm bells throughout the country, particularly the foreign ministry, who's concerned about its impact on tourism. So you ask, what does this have to do with diplomacy? Well, I think we can concoct the notion of gastro-diplomacy, a new specialty which can only be positive for France. The great game of diplomacy can take many forms. Amidst political tugs of war and economic struggles, a more appetizing weapon can be found. It's called gastronomy. France's heritage lies in its cuisine and wine. Since 2010, French cuisine has been declared a world heritage by UNESCO. And this isn't a heritage that we must just admire, glorify and enjoy. We must also ensure that it is showcased, that it grows and develops. The Good de France drive is also aimed at saving jobs. Some 600,000 employees alone work in catering in France, jobs that cannot be allocated elsewhere. A concept understood by Poland. Leading the Polish Conry offensive in the French capital, chef Adam Kratowski. I was born under communism. This globalized world that pushes for regularity, it doesn't suit me. I prefer working with local products. A dash of culinary talent, a pinch of politics and a smidgen of communications. That's a successful recipe for gastro diplomacy, according to this Polish chef. So I try to improve communication with Polish cuisine to encourage people to come to the country and discover it there. Nicolas Chatonnier is a gastronomic consultant and it's in his restaurant La Table Ronde where the Polish chef sets to work, cooking up a lesson of diplomacy. What we've been recently witnessing is the emergence and evolution of Nordic cuisine. By topping the world's 50 best restaurants list, René Redzepi of Noma showed us how we can go from baking a gastronomic dessert in a Nordic kitchen to creating something influential. Denmark too has taken a leaf out of Spain's book from the early 2000s, using food not politics as a tool to foster cultural understanding. This isn't just any potato or carrot. This is the first kitchen that ensures local products are featured in dishes, and it provides a forum for creativity. It's then up to the expertise of the chef to tell the story of a country. While gastro diplomacy is a relatively new field in the realm of public diplomacy, it's nothing new to Louis Dablet. The African chef decided to go back to his roots after training at a French school and working in England. Although not a politician, he found a way of dabbling in diplomacy. I discovered African cuisine in London. I realized as an African, despite this culture of eating good food at home, I had never seen it in a restaurant set up by white people, no less. 
It was like a slap in the face to see white people draw attention to African cuisine in London. And I said to myself, it's not normal. Since then, Loïc has made it his mission to showcase his African cuisine. And to make people appreciate his cooking, he started out with a dish known to all. Subconsciously, from the moment that you know it's fish and chips, you are less wary. But that's part of the education, creating a recipe, one that enables people to taste something they are not familiar with, like discovering yam. All the ingredients are African. Tea of fish from Senegal and Guinea, yam, and bread made of cassava flour. The work we do every day is to make the food sexy and to turn around a larger number of dishes, so that in 5, 6, 10, 15 or 20 years, African cuisine is in the same category as Italian, Asian or Indian counterparts. And what about French cuisine in all of this? It's certainly multifaceted, perhaps even too much. That's according to David Sinapion, who receives us in his wife and Sophie Pick's three Michelin star restaurant. Today, French gastronomy is not selling well. It's no longer selling because of emerging cuisines from less known countries who have stolen the limelight. Perhaps it's because France is too rich in talent that is becoming less so talked about in the global landscape of gastronomy. If you want to be heard today, it is essential to restrict those who are the ambassadors of French gastronomy abroad. And here they are, the ambassadors of French gastronomy meeting with Foreign Minister Fabius in the suburbs of Paris. From this photograph, one thing is certain, young chefs are few and far in between. Just the familiar faces of Alain Ducasse, Gérard Passeda and Guy Savoie. It's becoming more and more of a challenge to make their outdated voices heard. So, for a fresh take on French cuisine, we turn to Cyril Atzarik in Lozère, an ancient pilgrim path where he takes us to his stepfather. He's a butcher. In fact, the whole family is a part of this business because his nephews are farmers. Salut! Bonjour! Okay, so let's look at what we've got here. I like to work with lamb fillets because I love lamb. I think it's great that you can cook it in three different ways. We also prepare lamb necks here. And it's this well-known meat that has become the basis of Cyril's cuisine, reflective of the richness of French cooking, where the soil is matched nowhere else in the world. There are plenty of restaurants around the world, like in Spain or the Nordic countries, where the culinary culture is rather poor, yet they seek inspiration from their local food culture, seek our local products, regional products, something that was not done by more traditional restaurants in these countries, but something that has been done in France for a long time. So there's very little reason to fear for the future of French cuisine. Although it doesn't embody all the latest trends, according to Cyril, it will always remain on top. It's hard to break the barriers, because we need time. Our foundation for any dish is the sauce, the gravy, and of course time. Here we're leaving it for six, seven hours to cook while we work on the broth. Spain, Denmark and Poland are not the only nations to acknowledge the importance of culinary diplomacy. In Peru, Mistura Festival was launched to put the country's national cuisine on the map. And the man behind the event, Gaston Acurio. Trained in France some 22 years ago, he's now the spokesman for Peruvian cooking. On November the 20th, he was invited by Alain Ducasse to the Plaza Athene, where the three Michelin star chef took the opportunity to set up a Nordic quest. The spirit of Peru is generous. It's no coincidence. There are many northern countries that don't necessarily have that generous nature, but they speak a lot. We want to share. 
We want to share, we want the world, well, we want people to like our cuisine. And beyond that, we want to promote tourism in Peru. We promote our products in all the smaller markets worldwide. We want to find opportunities for smaller producers too. According to a Peruvian diplomat, the country's trade is somewhat dependent on the likes of Acurio and their gastronomy. It's very important for Peruvians to have the support of the government, to be able to evolve their cuisine and popularize it. I believe Peruvian cuisine is today amongst the most important in the world. Although gastro diplomacy has rarely helped overcome diplomatic incidents, the concept is embraced by France who has turned to its national cuisines to promote its country's brand abroad and remain the world's leading tourist destination. Okay, from the kitchen back into the studio, you've been watching Beyond Business here on France 24. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. And don't forget that you can get more business news on our website, france24.com. Stay with us.